Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Girivana Dari Yashoda Nandana Brother Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Raja Janna Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachai Yamuna Tira Vanachai Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare. Ma, Hare, Hare, Krishna, Hare, Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Prabhupada 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 Bravo pa jaya jaya bravo pa Jaya Om Vishnu Pada Paramahamsa Pavakacharya Shishi Aishi Bhakti Vedanta Srila Prabhupada Ki It's kind of fun your acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Namacharya Haridasa Go Ki Pishi Kaho Shri Krishna Shaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasari Gora Bhakti Vrinda Radha Krishna Gopi Gopanath Radha Kun Shyamakun Giri Ravadam Ki Vrindavanam Ki Mayapur Dam Ki Jagannapuri Dam Ki Bhakti Devi Ki Vrindavanam Ki Jagannath Puri Ki, my poor Dham Ki, all glorious to the simple devotees, all glorious to the simple devotees, all glorious to the simple devotees, all glorious to Shi Guru and Shi Goranga.
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Just trying to find where I'm at. Okay, so the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 9, Text 37. Hitam samastista. Paramena samadina. Bhavan kalpa bhikalpa shu. Nave mo yati kahichit. Itam matam samatista. Paramina samadina. Bhavan kalpa bhikalpa shu. Nave mo yatai kahichit. Itam matam samatista. Paramina samadina. Bhavan kalpa vikalpa shu. Nave mo yati kahichit. Okay, word for word. Ita, this, matam, the conclusion, samatista, remain fixed, paramena, by the supreme, samadina, concentration of the mind, bhavan, yourself, kalpa, intermediate devastation, vik. Vikal Pashu in the final devastation. Navimu Yati will never bewilder. Kahichi anything like compliance. Complacence, sorry. Translation. O Brahma, just follow the conclusion by fixed concentration of mind, and no pride will disturb you neither in the partial nor in the final devastation. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki? As in the Bhagavad Gita, 10th chapter, the personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna, has summarized the whole text in four verses, namely, Aham, Savasya, Prabhavaha, etc. So the complete Srimad Bhagavatam has also been summarized in four verses as a hum, eva sum, eva gre, etc. Thus, the secret purpose of the most important Bhagavati conclusion has been explained by the original speaker of the Srimad Bhagavatam, who was also the original speaker of the Bhagavad Gita, the Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. There are many Grammians and non-devotee material wranglers who have tried to present false interpretations of these four verses of the Srimad Bhavatam. But the Lord himself advised Brahmaji not to be deviated from the fixed conclusions the Lord has taught him. The Lord was the teacher of the nucleus of Srimad Bhavatam in four verses, and Brahma was the receiver of the knowledge. Misinterpretation of the word aham by the word jugglery of the impersonalist should not disturb the mind of the strict followers of the Srimad Bhavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is a text of the personality of Godhead and his unalloyed devotees, who are also known as the Bhagavatas. And any outsider should have no access to this confidential literature of devotional service. But unfortunately, the impersonalists, who have no relation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, sometimes try to interpret Srimad Bhagavatam by his poor fund of knowledge in grammar and dry speculation. Therefore, the Lord warns Brahma and through Brahma all future devotees of the Lord and in the succession of Brahma 
that one should never be misled by the conclusions of the so-called grammarians or by other men with poor fund of knowledge, but must always fix the mind properly via the parampara system. No one should try to give a new interpretation by dint of mundane knowledge. And the first step, therefore, in pursuance of the system of knowledge received by Brahma, is to approach a bona fide guru who is a representative of the Lord, following the parampara system. No one should try to squeeze out his own meaning by imperfect mundane knowledge. The guru or bona fide spiritual master is competent to teach the disciple in the right path with reference to the context of all authentic Vedic literature. He does not attempt to juggle words to bewilder the student. The bona fide spiritual master, by his personal activities, teaches the disciple the principles of devotional service. Without personal service, one would go on speculating like the impersonalists and dry speculators, life after life, and would be unable to reach the final conclusion. By following the instructions of a bona fide spiritual master in conjunction with the principles of revealed scriptures, the student will rise to the plane of complete knowledge, which will be exhibited by development of detachment from the world of sense gratification. The mundane regulars are surprised that one can detach himself from the world of sense gratification, and thus any attempt to be fixed in God-realisation appears to them to be mysticism. This detachment from the century world is called Brahma Buddha, sage of realization, the primary stage, the preliminary stage of all transcendental devotional life, Parabhaktihi. The Brahma Bhuti stage of life is also known as the Atmarama stage, in which one is fully self realized, or self satisfied, I should say, and does not hanker for the world of sense enjoyment. This stage is full of satisfaction. This stage of full satisfaction is the proper situation for understanding the transcendental knowledge of the personality of Godhead. The Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.20 affirms this. Ivam prasanna manaso bhagavad bhakti yogataha bhagavad tattva vijyanam mukta sangasya jayate. Thus, in the completely satisfied stage of life, exhibited by full detachment from the material, from the world of sense enjoyment, as a result of performing devotional service, one can understand the science of God in the liberate, liberated stage. In this stage of full satisfaction and detachment from sensory world, one can know the mystery of the science of God before confidential intricacies. In and not by the grammar and or academic speculations. Because Brahma qualified himself for such re, uh, reception. The Lord was pleased to disclose the purport of a Srimad Bhagavatam. This direct instruction by the Lord to any devotee who is detached from the world of sense gratification is possible. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita 10.10. Tisham satata yuktanam bhajatatam pratai Onto the devotees who are constantly engaged in the Lord's transcendental loving service, Priti Purvakam, the Lord, out of his causeless mercy upon the devotee, gives direct instructions so that the devotee may make accurate progress on the path of returning back to Godhead. One should not therefore try to understand these four verses of a Srimad Bhavatam by mental speculation, rather by direct perception of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One is able to know all about his abode by Kumsa, as was seen and experienced by Brahmaji. Such by Kumsa realization is possible by any devotee of the Lord situated in the transcendental position as a result of devotional service. In the Gopal Tapani Upanishad, Shruti, it is said, Gopaveshu me purushaha purutad avabha bhuva. The Lord appeared before Brahma as a cowboy, that is, the original personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna Govinda, who is later described by Brahmaji in his Brahma Samhita 5 9. 
चिंतामणी प्रथर सर्मा सुखौ पवृक्षा लक्षावृथेषु सुरुबे अविपालयन्तम लक्ष्मी सहार सत संभ्रम से व्यपनम गोविंद मारी पूजन तमहम बजामे ब्रह्माजी डिजायर्स टू वर्शिप द ओरिजिनल द ओरिजिनल पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड लॉर्ड श्री कृष्ण हु रिसाइड्स इन द टॉप मोस्ट बाकुंठा प्लेनेट नोन एज गोलोक वृंदावन where he where is in the where he is in the habit of keeping surabi cows as a cowboy and where he is served by hundreds and thousands of goddesses of fortune the gopis with love and respect therefore lord shri krishna is the original form of the supreme lord krishna's tu bhagavan swayam this is also clear from the instructions The supreme personality of Godhead is Lord Krishna and not directly Narayan of the Purusha avatars which are some subsequently manifestations therefore Shrimad Bhagavatam means consciousness of a supreme personality of Godhead Lord Shri Krishna and Shrimad Bhagavatam is the sound represent sound representation of the Lord as much as the Bhagavad Gita is Thus, the conclusion is that the Shrimad Bhagavatam is a science of the Lord, in which the Lord and His abode are perfectly realized. Chill a whole part, key. First of all, I'd like to ask for the blessings of the senior devotees, and I may say something of value. Where my Swami was meant to be given class today. And instead of getting the rose, he getting the thorn. Myself, I'm sorry. So first of all, I like how I started last class. Just like to touch a little bit. Wow, the time's flying. And、um, the importance of the Shri Mag Bhavatam. We're so fortunate to have this human form of birth. Eight million four hundred thousand species, and we've got this birth, so we should make. Best use of it, and here in this Shrimad Bhagavatam is so important. And just within this Shrimad Bhagavatam class, like myself and KK were talking about the other day,、um, we experience the five limbs of Bhakti. So we're hearing, we're chanting, we're getting the association of devotees、uh, service, and also we're in a holy dharm. So this Shrimad Bhagavatam class is very special, and we're very fortunate that we get to hear the Shrimad Bhagavatam every day. So we just finished、um, the four verses、uh, over the last four days prior to this day.、Uh, those four verses encapsulated the essence of the Bhagavatam. And I've heard a few times Sri Lopal Pad call these previous verses the nutshell verses of the Shrimad Bhagavatam. So there's so many distractions within this material world, so many rainbows and unicorns which deviate us from the ultimate truth. And、we hear within this verse, Lord Brahma. I mean, Lord Krishna is warning Lord Brahma about those who twist the teachings of those who speculate, etc. And it's only through following this disciplic succession, which we're fortunate enough to be in, that one can arrive at true understanding. Ivam param para praptam imam rajasoshe rajaseyo viruhu. Bhagavad Gita 4.2. This verse is also spoken by Lord Chaitanya in the、uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita when he's speaking to Rupa Goswami. So it's a very important little point. So without accepting a bona fide spiritual master coming in the succession, one cannot find the real purpose of devotional service. So being within this succession, taking a spiritual master is so important to understand these higher truths. So it is this chain that links us to understanding true knowledge. So we've been hearing about these verses over the last few days,、uh, how they've got all the Bhagavatam wrapped up within them, which Sri Lopal Pad calls the nutshell verses. And these verses identify God Himself as Lord Krishna, the supreme personality of Godhead. We also learn that in the beginning and end, only Krishna exists. And、uh, all commentators, especially Jiva Goswami and Sri La Polpad, have、uh, offered numerous verses to support、uh, these statements, such as the verse from the Mahapanishad, 
Eko Vai Narayana Ashanna Brahma Na Ishano. Lord Narayan Krishna existed before the material world was created, when there was no Brahma or Lord Shiva. Jiva Goswami cites this verse from the Bhagavad Sandarbha 9611. All other phenomena, whether living or non-living, spiritual or material, emanate from the Supreme Lord and wind up in Him. He is the source and origin of all, and He is their repose. This is not to say that he, His emanations are not real. They are real. But it is He who gives them their reality. He is the inner core of their existence. One who knows these truths, the Bhagavatam tells us, will pursue Krishna in earnest with no other interest. And Krishna Das Kaviraj also writes that everything is within these four verses which we've just heard. It explains in those nutshell verses the essence of the Srimad Bhagavatam, our relationship with the Lord, our activities in that connection, and the goal of life. They're all manifested within these four verses of the Srimad Bhagavatam, known as the Chatur Shloki. And uh, I was looking a bit further into this because I was asking a lot of questions over the four days about these verses. And uh, I've seen that uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj, he, um, he explains how everything's within these verses. And uh, he, he, he matched it with the, the sound Om, the sound representation of Krishna. And the meaning of the sound vibration of Omkar is present in the Gayatri Mantra. The same is elaborately explained in the four shlokas of a Srimad Bhagavatam as a Chattu Shloki. That's from the Madhya Lila 2594. Srila uh, Prabhupada writes in the Madhya Lila 2597, the sound vibration Omkar is the root of all Vedic knowledge. Omkar is known as the Mahavakya of a Supreme Lord. Whatever meaning is in the supreme sound Omkar is further understood in the Gayatri Mantra. Again, this same meaning is explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the four shlokas known as the Chatur Shloki, which begin with the word Aham Eva Sam Eva Gre. The Lord says, only I existed before the creation. From this statement, four shlokas have been composed, and these are known as the Chattu Shloki. In this way, the Supreme Personality of Godhead informed Lord Brahma about the purport of the Chattu Shloki. Again, Lord Brahma explained this to Narada Muni, and Narada Muni explained it to Srila Vyasadeva. This is the Parampara system, the disciplic succession, the import of Vedic knowledge, the original word Pranava, has been explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, I looked a bit further, and Jivaka Swami talks in the Gopala Tapani Upanishad how Om equals everything, just like these verses do. Om is a combination of the letters A, U, and M, and A meaning Krishna, U meaning Radharani, and M meaning the Jiv, so the spirit soul. Then I was, looked a bit further into the, what I was reading here, and it, how it says that Krishna. Um, after everything, does Krishna exist? So I kind of question that. What Krishna exists isn't Krishna somewhere within the within the spiritual world with all these devotees. So I found some information by um, Jiva Goswami in the Bhagavat Sandarbha nine six twelve, and there's a sentence which says, "The king goes." The word "king" may also mean the king's messenger. Of the king's soldiers. So the word Aham, he does not mean the Lord, but also means the Lord's abode of Vaikuntha, the Lord's associates, and everything else in direct relation with him. In this way, the meaning should be understood. This is consistent with the teachings of a larger tradition, which states that Krishna is always in his company of his divine associates. So I just needed to check that for myself. I found that a very interesting point. So today is Madhavendra Puri's disappearance day. So we're going to talk a little about him today. 
And we, just, we were just hearing in the Srimad Bhagavatam just then how um, this devotional service is so important to understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we're going to hear about some unbelievable devotional service for devotees that I'm about to talk about. So he's a very special devotee within our lineage. He's um, Ishvara Puri's spiritual master, which is a spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So very significant within our line. So I'm just going to read some pastimes now about Madhavendra Puri. Before Lord Chaitanya appeared, he sent his eternal associates like Sri Advaita, Sri Jagannath Mishra, Sachi Mata, Madhavendra Puri, Ishvara Puri to earth. Sri Madhavarandara Puri took initiation from Sri Lakshmipati Tita in the Madhvacharya Sampadaya. He had many, but Sri Advaita Acharya and Sri Ishvara Puri were his chief disciples. In, way or one, in one way or another, all Vaishnavas in Bengal and Setra Mandala, Jagannath Puri, were connected with Sri Madhavendra Puri. After Lord Chaitanya came, many of his disciples joined Mahaprabhu's Sangatan movement. Madhavendra Puri's body was completely full of divine love. So were his followers. He displayed uncommon love of God. Seeing a dark blue rain cloud, he would fall down unconscious day and night. He was intoxicated from drinking the Ambrosh of Krishna Prem. After making an extensive pilgrimage to Bharat Bhumi, India, he passed his life in Vrindavan Orissa. He began to the, resur- uh, the restoration of Vrindavan that Sri Rupa and San- Sanatana Goswami continued later. Wandering from grove to grove, remembering Radha Krishna's street Vrindavan pastimes, Madhavandra Puri would faint in ecstasy. In a dream, Gopal ordered Madhavandra Puri to uncover a buried deity and install him at the top of Govardhan Hill. Madhavandra Puri celebrated Gopal's Installation with a, 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 a Nakuta Grand Festival offering, a mountain of foodstuff to Krishna. This Anakuta festival, also known as Govardhan Puja, is one of the most important Vaishnava festivals in Vrindavan, also here. In India and around the world, the original Gopal deity known as Sri Nataji is now worshipped in Natavara Rajasthan. Madhavandra Puri introduced the conception of Madhura Bhav, conjugal love, in the Madhvacharya Sampadaya. He was uh, in the, I just learned recently that in the spiritual world, he's a uh, Kalpa Viksha tree, Madhavandra Puri, which is very ecstatic. But just not any Kalpa Viksha tree, he's actually the Kalpa Viksha tree, which Radha and Krishna have their pastimes under. So very ecstatic. Madhavandra Puri sowed the seed of Prema Bhakti and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came the towering tree, dr- towering tree dropping honey, sweet fruits of Prem upon everyone. He also revealed Virahabhav, the mood of love, relished in separation from God. His branch of Madhva sect distinguished itself by this ecstatic love of God. It is known as the Madhva Gaudiya Sampadaya. In Jagannath Puri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed an intense mood of Virahabhav. This intensified unlimitedly when the Lord heard verses from the Srimad Bhavatam 10th canto. Krishna, Kanamarita, Gita Govinda, Padyavali, and the love poems of Chandidash and Vidyapati. Mahaprabhu Vigraha began with a single verse spoken by Madhavendra Puri. His Param Guru, Grand Preceptor. O compassionate Lord of the poor and humble, O Lord of Mathura, when shall I see you again? Without seeing you, my heart has become very much afflicted. O my beloved, I am overwhelmed. What shall I do now? In the Shaitanya Charity Tamrita Madhya Lila 4197. Krishnadas Kaviraj says that as the diamond Kastuba jewel is the most precious among all rare valuable jewels, this shloka is the rare kavya, the best verse in the entire treasury of Russia poetry. Actually, this verse was spoken by Srimata Radharani herself. It was Radharani's 
pathetic cry to Shama Sundra, who had gone to Mathura, leaving her alone, desperate in Vrindavan. Radharani's mercy brought this same verse from the mouth of Madhav Vendrapuri. Reciting even a few words of this shloka would tear, tear open the door of Mahaprabhu's ecstatic love, making him swoon in ecstasy, falling unconscious, feeling intense separation, feeling intense separation from Krishna. Madhavendra Puri's constant chanting of this verse, constantly chanted this verse when he departed this world. Krishna Das Kaviraj says that with this verse, Madhavendra Puri teaches devotees how to achieve Krishna Prem by cultivating intense feelings of separation from Krishna. Gaudiya Vaishnavas accept that this verse expresses the essence and mood of separation. The Gaudiya Sampadaya teaches that worship of Radha and Krishna in separation represents the highest level of devotional service. At this stage of realisation, the devotee feels completely vacant in the world in absence of Krishna. A moment without Madhava feels like a millennium. Sri Krishna Mahaprabhu always swam in the ocean of Divyanamada, Mahabhav, the maddened ecstatic emotion shown by Sri Radha, in Brahma Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam 10.47. In this verse, Madhavanja Puri discloses similar emotions. The Gaudi Vaishnavas conclude that the monsoon shower of ecstatic love exhibited by Lord Garanga during his manifest pastimes began with Madhavanja Puri. It then came through Ishvara Puri, who displayed the role of Lord Chaitanya's spiritual master. Continue some more pastimes. During Nichananda Prabhu's tour of the holy places of India for the purpose of purifying them, by the will of Providence, he happened to meet Madhavendra Puri somewhere in western India. When Nichananda Prabhu saw Madhavendra Puri Goswami, he fainted away in a swoon of ecstatic love and his transcendental body became completely still. Similarly, when Madhavanja Puri gazed upon Nichananda Prabhu, he com- completely forgot himself and fainted to the ground. Sri Gora Sundra used to repeatedly remark that in relishing the mellows of love and devotion, there is no one in- to compare with Madhavanja Puri. When the disciples of Madhavanja Puri, headed by Ishvara Puri, saw their spiritual master and the Prabhu fallen in a faint of ecstatic love, they began to cry. Gradually, Nichananda Prabhu and Madhavanjara got their, back their e- eternal consciousness. When their eyes opened and they gained, again got sight of one, ar- one another, they put their arms around each other's necks and cried tears of joy. Then they began to roll in the sandy earth, carried by the waves of ecstatic love, while were rendering the sky with their loud roaring. As a river of love began to flow from their eyes, Mother Earth considered herself to be blessed in being flooded by that inundation. With the appearance of the transformations brought by above, trembling, tears, and standing of the hairs on end, it could be understood that their bodies had become a place of pastimes for Shatanya. Nishananda exclaimed, Today I have received the fruit of all my travels to the holy places. In seeing the feet of Madhavandra Puri, I've received the treasure of love of God, and thus my life has become blessed. Madhavandra Puri continued to embrace Nichananda Prabhu tightly to his chest. He wanted to say something, but his voice was choked up due to experience these intense emotions. Ishvara Puri, Brahmananda Puri, and the other disciples of Sri Puri Pad present became completely ignored. Enorm by admission on the Prabhu. Some of our pilgrims were present at the time, but due to being devoid of devotion, they could not understand what was going on and continued to converse among themselves. The devotees felt some sorrow to see the behaviour of those dull headed brutes, so they repeated retreated to the forest to be rid of their company. When they were alone again, their distresses were destroyed and they continued to relish the mellows of Krishna Prem. In this way, Nishananda Prabhu and Madhavanjapuri spent some days together in happiness of Krishna Kata. 
Before Lord Chaitanya appeared, he sent his eternal associates like Sri Advaita Acharya, Sri Jagannath Mishra, Sachi Mata, and Madhavandra Puri, Ishvara Puri to earth. Sri Madhavandra Puri took initiation from Sri Lakshmapati Tita in the Madhvacharya Sampadaya. He had many, but Sri Advaita Acharya and Sri Ishvara Acharya were their chief disciples of Madhavandra Puri. In one way or other, all Vaishnavas in Bengal and Setra Mandala Jagannapuri were connected with Sri Madhavandra Puri. And after Lord Chaitanya came to this earth, all their disciples joined the Sangatan movement. Madhavandra Puri's body was completely full of divine love, so were his followers. He displayed uncommon love of God, seeing a dark blue rain cloud, he would fall down unconscious. Day and night he was intoxicated from drinking the ambrosia of Krishna Prem. Madhavanja Puri introduced the conception of Madhura Bha, conjugal love, in the Madhvachari Sampadaya. Madhavanja Puri sowed the seed of Prima Bhakti and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became the towering tree of dropping honey and sweet fruits of Prima upon everyone. He also revealed vir- Virabha, the mood of love relished by separation from God. His branch, the Madhva sect, distinguished itself by the ecstatic love of God, known as the Madhva Gaudiya Sampadaya. So there's just a few little pastimes of Mad- Madhavanja Puri. Very ecstatic devotee within our disciplic succession. And um, we're very fortunate that we get to follow in such footsteps of amazing devotees. So uh, in that verse from the, on the Bhagavatam, which we were just reading, it was, this, uh, it was touching on the importance of devotional service and how to understand all of this, all of these transcendental topics. And we've seen that in the story which I just covered just then um, when Madhavanja Puri and his associates were experiencing these ecstatic symptoms. Worldly people couldn't even understand what was going on. They just thought they were crazy. But one who understands these higher topics, and that is through devotional service, through hearing, through chanting, through uh, getting the association of devotees, through spending time in holy places, that whole world opens up to us. So we have to count our blessings each day. We're so fortunate that we get to experience all of these on a day-to-day basis. And it's just due to us just chipping away at the process which Srila Prabhupada has put before us and all the previous acharyas. And by showing up, that's the most important thing, just by showing up day in and day out and just getting our basics right, um, we can come to that realisation. And... um, Move forward to Goloka Vrindavan. Is there any questions today? Yes, Chandrika Devadasi. Yeah, we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, actually. Yeah. So you see, um, like we've had the Beatles in the 60s and I've spoken to devotees who've seen them in person and they just collapsed. And still, still to this day, when I've, I've known people who've gone over to America, to Hollywood, and have seen a really famous person and just seeing that famous person is just so bewildering, whether it's the shock of that person or their fame and they just collapse or they start crying, their hairs are standing up on end. But that's on a very, that's, that's on a very, that's on a very material level. But it's, yeah, that's, that's what they're experiencing here, but it's on the transcendental platform. And it's through this practice of devotional service, which we're doing day in and day out, that we can eventually get to that stage. Do we can, Shira Prabhupada. Yeah. Yeah, if we follow the process... 
Yeah, we were talking about that the other week. It was just wild how some people would act to the Beatles especially were just far out. Then, then like I said, I, I've spoke to people and they've said when they've seen a, a famous person, they just they can't bear the, the view of them. They're just too much for them. Imagine seeing Krishna. <laughs> so, and you see, like you see in the in the in the in the um, Brihat Bhagavatam Rita when he becomes self-realized and he goes to the spiritual world. That's what happens at first sight of Krishna. So the soul attains perfection. He goes to uh, he goes to Goloka Vrindavan, and he sees Krishna, and Krishna sees him first time, and they 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 run for each other. And it, the, the emotions are so intense that they both just pass out and collapse to the ground. And, you know, Balaram's standing his brother and Krishna wakes back up and then they have this big dialogue. But that, that's, that separate, Krishna was feeling separation from, from that, from that, uh, what, he was now a cowherd boy. He'd missed him for so, he was saying, like, I, 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 was, I was longing for you to be with me, but you were so caught up within the material world. You know, I experience you go through all these pains and distresses and so forth. And this one lifetime you turn to me. And all it takes is that one lifetime. You know, if we turn to Krishna in, in, in one lifetime, we can make um, the, the, those steps to be in that position. But yeah, even when you arrive at Goloka Vrindavan, you, you, you're like one of those girls who sees the Beatles. <laughs> is there any more questions? One more. No. Cool. So we have just finished on the um the the these four verses from the Srimad Bhagavatam. They contain everything. So whenever we get spare time, we can always meditate on these verses, go over them again and again, get inspiration, get knowledge, and um. Yeah, just keep pushing forward in our devotional life. We're very fortunate here at New Devadan, like I say. Every class we get so much nice association. And association is so important. It's very hard to understand Srimad Bhagavatam. It's very hard to understand these topics which we hear about within these Bhagavatam classes. But it's due to the mercy of uh, Guru Garanga, the devotees around us, that our eyes are opened and our hearts are opened and we're able to understand these topics. So it may seem a bit out there at times or a bit hard to comprehend, but anyone can follow this process and come to the understanding and achieve self-realisation. All glory to Sri Prabhupada, Sri Prabhupada ki. Yeah. Maravanjapuri ki. Yeah.